Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sustainable Development eTalk series, co-hosted by CNS and Indian Institute of Management in Dor. Our keynote speaker for today's talk is none other than Dr. Sandeep Pandey, as we all know, who is a noted social justice activist and Raman Magsisi awardee. Uh, he is well known and respected for leading several people's struggles and social justice movements in the past three de decades. Dr. Sandeep Pandey has been with us earlier too on this SDG talk series, but we can never ever have enough of him. Uh, today he will give us a reality check on inclusive and equitable quality education for all. A very warm welcome from the students of Indian Institute of Management to our esteemed speaker for today's e-talk, Dr. Sandeep Pandey. We are really looking forward to hearing from you, sir. Okay, now today's talk is uh, slightly special in the sense that this morning session will be followed by another session at 9 p.m. today on border free South Asia and civil liberties. But now I invite Dr. Sandeep Pandey to share his insights on inclusive and equitable education. So, <clears throat> let us begin with uh, the literacy rate of India. It is about, so we are going to talk about the um, right to education only in the context of India. Uh, but of course, comparing it to the other countries in the world and how India should follow a model which is uh, well established, tried and tested all over the world, the common school system, if it wants to give education to all its children. Uh, literacy rate of India is 74.04%. This is a 2011 data. Uh, but you can you can trust me that uh, it has not improved very much. After that, the male literacy rate is about 82.14% and female literacy rate is 65.46%. Um, and uh, what to talk of uh, improvement, uh, even this uh, figure is inflated because you know, a large number of students in, in our country um, do not take education very seriously. And there is a phenomena of mass copying. Children pass their exam by copying. So um, even this figure does not reflect the true uh, ability and knowledge of the students. Um, in 2019, we had an act called the right to right of children to free and compulsory education act uh, but as you would see just look around and you can see that education is neither free nor compulsory every student even the ones going to the government schools have to pay something um, education is supposed to be free for the children in government schools but you will find that in the name of one thing or the other, they do end up paying. And um, the private schools, of course, are fleecing the parents and have made a business out of it. Uh, um, a very flowering you know, business. And uh, uh, it is no longer a, a learning and, and 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 uh, you know knowledge exercises has become more of a market uh, commodity where uh, you are supposed to receive the education and then yourself you know become marketable. Um, so we have two kinds of education systems in this country. One is for uh, children of the rich, and the other for the poor. Oh, in the previous point, uh, I failed to mention that neither education is free nor compulsory because you can see number of children is still working at tea shops and other places which means they are not going to school there there might be children coming to your homes with along with your domestic help or or along with the sanitation workers who may be involved in 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 cleaning your houses so which means that they are not going to school uh, in, in my own home, there is a girl who comes who dropped out after four and uh, fourth class. And uh, in spite of convincing her mother that she should let her go to school because this young girl was interested in going to school, the mother did not put this girl into school because she was afraid that after her, 
uh, her family will not be able to retain these five houses with which she serves. So she wants her daughter to to grow up and and take over these these houses where she has been cleaning, so that you know there is a secure income for the family. So that is how the 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 children of more. The, the laborers, you know, who a lot of whom we have seen during this uh, lockdown crisis, walking on highways. Uh, so children of of uh, such class, uh, they uh, either don't go to school or their education is disrupted at some point, and then they are not able to uh, complete their education. Just yesterday in a slum where we are running a community kitchen, I met a number of girls. Uh, who teenage girls who have completed their education till class five? Some of them have not gone to school at all, and they they do want to go to school, but then you know their families would not let them go. With girls, there's this additional problem, you know, that their parents want them to be married off early so that there are no untoward incidents, you know, like the girl running away with a boy or something like that. So. Uh, they they uh, would like to uh, the girls to drop out and get married so that you know their responsibility is over this is a big problem among the poor section uh, so uh, as i mentioned education is neither free nor compulsory and uh, in our country because there are two kinds of education systems one for the children of rich and the other for the children of poor uh, the education actually widens the gap between the rich and the poor. Uh, one would expect that uh, you know the education would reduce the gap between the rich and the poor, but the reverse is happening in this country. The the children of the rich who go to uh, so-called better schools, better in the sense that they prepare them better for the market. That's all. Uh, it's, it's got nothing to do with knowledge. Uh, so. Uh, the gap between such children and the children of poor who who drop out at some stage do not complete their education or even if they are able to complete their education somehow uh, by mass copying or 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 whatever means they their education is not of a quality where they can get good jobs there are exceptions of course we hear of children of of uh, uh, daily wage worker or some vendor who gets into iits but but uh, uh, such cases are very rare so education in a way is strengthens the hierarchical and social structure in this country you know we have because of the hindu religion we have a hierarchical structure in our society which is called the caste system and as you know um, traditionally only the upper caste children were allowed to get education we have the famous story of eklavya um, uh, so children of the uh, the lower caste or the dalits tribals eklavya was a tribal they were not uh, allowed to to access education uh, so uh, that structure is uh, pretty much continuing because uh, the class and the class class and the caste uh, uh, lines are are very parallel in india which means that most of the uh, rich class the the upper class the upper middle class is uh, dominated by the upper castes also and most of the poor uh, you know would be either obcs um, and even even among the obc obcs the the weaker among the obcs and the dalits um, dalits uh, which will include the scheduled castes and scheduled tribe both so um, in a way uh, the same hierarchical structure is being uh, strengthened because of the education uh, one would have expected that education will will do away with the caste system and the hierarchy but uh, doesn't seem to be happening as an example there are 100 reserve posts for scheduled caste professors at banaras hindu university but not a single of them filled because uh, you know nobody has been found suitable enough that is the technical word not found suitable nfs whenever the a scheduled caste professor would appear for an interview he or she would be declared not found suitable for the post so they never make it to the to the very top posts and that is why the the uh, caste system you know is reflected in all our institutions
um, uh, it is so in effect education is being used in India by the elite to conquer uh, disproportionate benefits for themselves at the cost of poor. Uh, why do I say disproportionate? Uh, it became very clear in this uh, lockdown crisis. The, there is a huge gap between the incomes of the rich and the poor, um, at least, uh, you know, 20 times. Uh, whereas, you know, uh, the famous socialist thinker, Dr. Lohia said that the income between the rich and the poor should not be more than 10 times. But in our country, especially after the new liberal economic policies, the incomes have income gaps have increased vastly and, and, and uh, education is being used by uh, the elite to essentially uh, maintain this gap and to further widen it and, and therefore, you know, uh, they, they end up uh, cornering uh, disproportionate benefits of the, for themselves at the cost of poor. We saw how the poor suffered uh, uh, because of this crisis. At least 18, 80 people have died on, on railway, whereas uh, nothing happened to the people who uh, were brought back to India by the Vande Bharat program, uh, which means by flight from the, from the uh, foreign countries. Uh, so the concern that the government shows for the for the rich, the policies that are, that are made uh, to favor them, that kind of sensitivity is not shown uh, for the poor. To give you another example, uh, if you are a, a government employee on a high position and you want yourself to be treated a, at a private hospital, you can, uh, there are ways you can convince the government to pay for your, for, for your treatment in a private hospital. So a number of, uh, you know, top ranking bureaucrats and politicians would get treated at the private hospice, hospital at government's expense. But if you are a migrant laborer and you are not using a government transport to return to your home in this crisis, you will not be paid the thousand rupees uh, relief when you reach your village or you will not get the relief packet of ration. So uh, flour and rice and, and dal, pulses, whatever people are getting when they reach their homes, the migrant laborers, they, it, they are eligible only if they have used a government transport, not otherwise. Whereas the same rule doesn't apply to the elite. Uh, their children can go to private schools, they can get themselves treated at private uh, hospitals and they can use all privatized, they can use private aircraft to travel, private airlines, aircraft belonging to private airlines to travel for the government meeting and they can be compensated, but not the migrant labor. Uh, so Jyotiba Phule, uh, a pioneer in the education of Dalits and girls in India, along with his wife, Savitri Bhai Fude, had said in, 19, in 1882 that the naive belief that all education is necessarily good, both for individual and for society, and that it will necessarily lead to progress can be as harmful as it is misplaced. Quantitatively, education can be organized to promote social justice or to retard it. History shows numerous instances where small social groups and elites have used education as a prerogative of their rule and as a tool for maintaining their hegemony and perpetuating the values upon which it has rested. On the other hand, there are cases in which social and cultural revolution has been brought about in a system where equality of educational opportunity is provided and education is deliberately used to develop more and more potential talent and to harness it to the solution of national problems. So um, in, in our own country, we can see in Kerala how education has been used to, to promote uh, uh, an equitable society. It is famous for Kerala that if you go there, you will, you will hardly find a difference between a city and a, and a rural area. Uh, most of the people are educated and, and uh, they, are, uh, they are aware of their rights um, in the lockdown period itself. Kerala has been praised 
for handling the corona virus crisis in in uh, the best possible manner among all the states in india so uh, education can be used in both ways by the elite and and uh, depending on how you use it you can uh, get uh, desired results uh, so if the intention itself is not to promote equality and equity that will not happen uh which is the case uh, uh, which appears to be the case with with uh, with india uh it will become more clear why i'm saying this so in in 1964 a kothari commission was formed to look into the question of education and and the report was completed in two years um and it was tabled in the parliament and in 68 and and two important recommendations of this commission were uh that there should be a common school system which means uh we should provide equality of access to all children and parents should not have to send a, a child to any independent school independent school means private school and the neighborhood school plan should be implemented uh to end the segregation between schools for privileged and underprivileged so these two concepts go together the common school system and the neighborhood school so neighborhood school is that your child goes to the nearest school so which means if rich and poor are living in a locality then uh, the children of both will go to the same school this is the concept which has been implemented as part of common school system in lot of countries of the world uh, to give you example all all g8 countries um uh you know have implemented it uh and among the developing countries uh, sri lanka iran uh southeast asian countries malaysia indonesia uh you know all these countries and central asian countries like kazakhstan uzbekistan and all uh, they have implemented the idea of common school system to achieve uh, universal elementary education uh and and that is possible only with a strong state funded and a state regulated common school system when we say common school system we always mean that it is funded by a uh, state and regulated by state there is no example in the world where private schools have been able to achieve the objective of universalization of elementary education there will always be people left out people who will not be able to pay for private education will be left out and therefore the private schools can never achieve this objective of universalization of elementary education or even a combination of private and government uh, you know will not be able to achieve it the only possible model uh, which will achieve uh, universalization of uh, elementary education is the common school system let us look at the uh youth female literacy rates in some selected asian countries the data again <coughs> belongs to 2010 but i can assure you that uh, it would not have changed much uh so uh, uh the female literacy rate um young female literacy rate um in 2010 in india was 74% uh, bangladesh 78 nepal 78 pakistan 61 is the only country which is below india uh, sri lanka was way above 99 um china was 99 indonesia was 99 malaysia was 98 philippines was 98 thailand was 98 and vietnam was 96 so you can see that all southeast asian countries in china and sri lanka are either 99 or in the very high 90s whereas uh, you know india pakistan bangladesh um and nepal are are uh, you know less than 80% and the situation of india is only better than that of pakistan even bangladesh uh, a smaller neighbor is ahead of india in terms of female literacy and that explains why uh the the um socio economic indicators of bangladesh are are better than that of india you educate your women 
and you can improve all your socio-economic indicators. This is uh, uh, a, a, an idea which uh, you can see being implemented in Bangladesh. The Bangladeshi policymakers have very wisely recognized that and have implemented that in their country. Uh, but what has happened? Uh, the other comment that I would like to make is all these countries which have high 90 literacy rates are the countries which have implemented common school system, which means the children have access to the same quality of a school, more or less the same quality of a school. And, and uh, you know, schools are run um, by, uh, in, in, for example, in the United States, they are run by the local government. But the, the curriculum and the textbooks and all that would more or less be same. The, uh, the standards that, that are expected to be maintained by the school would, would more or less be same. Uh, it will just depend on what kind of uh, population is, uh, uh, is using the services of the school. That will make uh, some difference. For example, if it is uh, um, a primarily white population, uh, who are rich, then um, materially the school may be better than a school, for example, in a black no poor neighborhood, but the, the content and the quality of education would be uh, about the same. Uh, in our country, there has been an avoidance of common school system. That is the history. So the government first ignored the Kothari Commission recommendations. Uh, of 68, none of the governments after 68 have cared to implement the Kothari Commission recommendation. It was only in 1993 when a Supreme Court judgment in the case of Unni Krishnan versus the state of Andhra Pradesh uh, came, which made education as free and compulsory and, and a fundamental right of children under the age of 14 years. Uh, immediately after that, um, uh, a, a Saikia committee was formed. Saikia was a state uh, education minister in that government um, to look into uh, the question whether uh, elementary education can be made a fundamental right. Now, here I must point out that when the Constitution of India was being drafted, Dr. Ambedkar wanted education to be a fundamental right, but there was uh, a lobby of the um, rich. Uh, landlords and and uh, and businessmen who did not want education to be made compulsory and their argument was that there are not enough resources in this country that the ch that the country can afford uh, to make education free and compulsory for everybody every child and therefore uh, education was not made a fundamental right uh, it was a subject under the directive principles and the government was supposed to work towards achieving um, universalization of elementary education. But uh, um, only in, in 93, when the Supreme Court judgment came, the government started looking at uh, seriously, looking seriously at this issue. And therefore, the Psychia Committee was formed and the Psychia Commission Committee came out with a recommendation saying that free elementary education can be made a fundamental right through a constitutional amendment. So then it was decided that the question of financing should be looked into whether the country has enough resources to, to take care of the educational expenses of all the children. And therefore, in 1997, a Tapas Majumdar committee was formed to look into this question. And this committee came out with a report saying that uh, if you were to implement uh, free and compulsory uh, education, elementary education, uh, then only an additional investment of 0.86% of GDP in 98-99 was required, 0.86%. The national spending uh, on education at that time was 3.9% of GDP. And uh, the Kothari Commission recommendation was 6%. So we were spending much less than what Kothari Commission had, had recommended. But the important point is that even without spending that much 
as recommended by Kothari Commission, even by just increasing our educational expenses by 1% of the GDP. So from 3.9%, it needed to be increased by 0.86%. And Tapas Majumdar Committee felt that that would be enough to take care of the uh, elementary educational needs of this country. Universalization of elementary education. So after this, uh, 86th constitutional amendment amendment was introduced in 2002, which paved the way for an act for free and compulsory education to make it a fundamental right. But uh, there were some problems with this amendment. For example, it um, uh, eliminated the age group zero to six percent. Um, it uh, 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 did various other things which were not acceptable to a number of activists and this uh, and soon after this um, when the new economic policies of privatization liberalization and globalization were implemented then there was an, also an interference of the private sector in policy making so government's committed commitment to universalization of elementary education got diluted uh, because of the interference of international financial institutions and a shift towards privatization was perceptible. Government also wanted a role for extra constitutional bodies in the draft bill with no guarantee that would work within the framework of the constitution. So this bill could not pass after three attempts. It was only uh, during the Manmohan Singh government um, that uh, there was uh, uh, a bill moved uh, there was a Central Advisory Board of Education, which uh, considered this. Kapil Sibal was member of it, not as the minister for uh, HRD, which uh, who was uh, Arjun Singh, uh, but Kapil Sibal as minister for Ocean Technology or something was there as a member, and he was uh, given the task of preparing the draft for the bill. Um, he, he made a draft and uh, this draft uh, uh, was opposed by uh, especially Anil Sad Gopal in the, in the cave meeting. And uh, there was heated arguments between him and uh, the minister, Kapil Sibal, uh, after which uh, the cave, the government decided not to call any cave meetings. And in 2009, pushed this bill and, and made it into a law. And um, a, a unique feature of this uh, act was that it offered 25% seats to children of disadvantaged category, which is on the basis of caste and medical conditions of parents and, and weaker sections, uh, uh, which is an economic criteria for free education from class one to eight in all schools, except minority institutions. So uh, children of any poor family who uh, fulfilled the criteria of, of uh, caste or, or uh, uh, the income uh, could claim 25% uh, seats in, in any private school. Uh, this was made possible by this act. Uh, the opposition that I mentioned to this act was because Activists like Anil Sadgopal were saying that the longest standing demand is for a uh, common school system. That is, we want a, 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 a school system uh, which is which is same for all children. We, we just don't want 25% you know, reservation in private schools for poor children. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, the, the first of all, the uh, percentage of poor is not just 25%. It is much higher. Uh, I think it would be closer to 75%. And secondly, the percentage of private schools uh, would be less than uh, that of the government schools. So this provision of 25% seats for children from uh, underprivileged background was not enough to uh, cover all the poor children. So uh, 
on on this uh, issue uh, there was a heated debate and the the meeting was uh, meeting ended abruptly and and after that there was no meeting in that government and the government pushed through this bill and and uh, implemented this law the uh, right to education act in 2009 but the private schools uh, are not very serious about uh, admitting uh, children from uh, disadvantaged or weaker sections and uh, especially in lucknow um, i can see that pravin shivastav ji is also there we have been uh, waging a struggle against the the biggest school um, the so called biggest school uh, they they claim to um, be running the biggest school because they have some 17 branches and and 50000 students enrolled um in the city uh, and city montessori school they have been um stoutly refusing to admit uh any any children whose admission is recommended by the district level education officer the basic shiksha adhikari uh, under this act so which means that this particular school is not following the law and is uh, uh has become an obstacle in the way of implementing the right to education act um the number of children that it did not admit um in so beginning 2015 16 the act was implemented in in up so even though it was passed in 2009 but it took several years for the government to to set up the mechanism so that this this act could be implemented so under section 121 c of this act uh 25% children are supposed to be admitted to all the schools belonging to disadvantaged category and weaker sections and admissions to city montessori school in lucknow have been ordered by the basic shiksha adhikari of 31 children in 2015 16 55 children in 2016 17 296 children in 2017 18 250 children in 2018 19 and um, about 193 or 4 children in in 2019 20 but the school has admitted just 13 out of 31 children in 2015-16 and that too because of an order from the high court and uh, after that it has admitted just two children um out of more than 200 children whose admissions were ordered in one of the years and otherwise has not admitted any children so openly flouting the law but no action has been taken against this school because it is very powerful it uses a strategy that they they admit children of bureaucrats and politicians and judges so uh, you you cannot expect any hearing on a complaint against this school because as soon as some action uh, would be considered against this school somebody influential will call up and and stop that action so um we feel that uh, the only way to deal with this problem that is the truant behavior of the private schools is uh, to implement the common school system and to implement the common school system um that is not easy because it is a 68 recommendation but not a single government after 68 has cared to implement it so uh, a step towards common school system would be to possibly implement the justice sudhir agrawal's judgment in uttar pradesh this is a judgment from 18th august 2015 of the ilahabad high court which said that make it compulsory for uh, everybody who is receiving a government salary to send their children to government schools compulsorily uh, because the judges felt that uh, uh, this was one way that the the schools and the and the uh, bureaucrats who uh, manage the education department would take the uh, education of uh, government schools seriously when their own children will study there 
and the uh, poor population will derive the benefit when the quality of the government schools will improve. This was the thinking behind the Sudhir Agrawal judgment of 2015 and uh, uh, the just like the RTE Act 2009 is not being taken by either the private schools or the government. This uh, judgment also was uh, never taken seriously by the government and it never thought of implementing it. Um, so, uh, um, the, um, as I see, time is almost coming to a close, so I will just uh, try to wind up. No, you so, can take uh, a little more time, please. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yes, you can take a little more time. We will, but uh, will oh. you be there a, a little while after 12 or you have to leave exactly at 12? No, I don't have to leave exactly after 12, but okay, uh, then I have to yes. okay. four o'clock, okay. so I will be preparing to leave for the meeting okay. after the session. Okay, okay, sorry. So you can continue for a little while. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, uh, so, so no. Anyway, I was, I was just uh, going to, um, you know, end the presentation. Okay. I'll take a few more minutes. So, uh, the right to free uh, and compulsory education has made education now a fundamental right for children in the age group of 6 to 14 years uh, because of the 86th amendment to constitution um, and uh, the uh, mm, uh, the act provides for 2000 uh, for 25 percent reservation for disadvantaged children in private schools um, uh, and the objective behind this is to create a more democratic and egalitarian society. This is what uh, the law says. Now, free means that no child should be liable to pay any kind of fee, which may prevent completing elementary education. There are various other things which are laid down in this law. For example, there is a, there is a standard for pupil, pupil teacher ratio, student teacher ratio. Uh, building an infrastructure, school working hours, teacher working hours. It prohibits punishment of any kind. There should be no screening procedures, no capitation fee, private tuitions are banned and, and unrecognized schools are banned. Now, uh, the very important point about the screening procedures, these days the school would uh, you know, conduct a test for admitting children even at the entry level. So that is ridiculous because the child is going to enter the school and you are testing the child or, or the parent of the children. So this is this has been banned by the by this by the act. It says that every child is entitled to uh, be admitted to the school. Um, and secondly, um, the the act initially had a provision that uh, mm, there would be no exams till class eight. Um, so there was a no detention policy and this policy was there because uh, half the children in India who are admitted to, uh, to schools, um, they drop out before the class 8 stage. So to ensure that, uh, which is about, you know, 25% uh, of, the, of the population of children. Um, so um, the other 25% never make it to school because they are in they are in child labor kind of situation making firecrackers at shiv kashi or glass bangles at ferozabad um, so only about half the children continue beyond class 8 and only about 10 to 12 percent of the children complete their class 12 education and enter the the college or the university level education so um, in order for uh, a greater number of children to be able to continue their education because uh, beyond class eight, a no detention provision uh, was introduced by this act. But unfortunately, the, the Bharti Janta Party government and even governments like that of Arvind Kejriwal were not in favor of this no detention policy and they have removed it. And they have, they have introduced uh, examinations even before class eight stage. But uh, during uh, the coronavirus lockdown, of course, it was not possible 
to conduct examinations and therefore the government uh, allowed the children to 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 be promoted even without examinations till class 8 uh, which is how it should be uh, but uh, anyway the, this particular government thinks differently um, so uh, the act act clearly said that no child should be held back expelled or required to pass any board examinations uh, that is till class 8 and there was supposed to be <coughs> a provision for a special training of a school dropouts and the responsibility of ensuring enrollment attendance and completion of education was entirely that of the government uh, the the act which was introduced by the atal bihari vajpayee government wanted to put this responsibility on the parents but uh, that uh, mm, uh, mistake was corrected and the the act introduced by the manmohan singh government put the responsibility on the government uh, which is how it should be because uh, for a poor family uh, you know it it may not be possible for the parents to uh, ensure education to to their children and therefore then it becomes the responsibility of the government um so um um in this entire debate um of uh, you know privatization of education and the private schools not letting um the right to education act uh, of 2009 implemented um according to the spirit of the law uh, a larger question arises and that is what is the purpose of education is the purpose of education to promote constitutional values like secularism socialism democracy liberty equality social justice fraternity or is it to serve the market because increasingly it appears that education is just preparing our children for a role in the market and and uh, then the citizens abdicate their social responsibility and and we create a situation like we have in the present lockdown crisis where you know uh, nobody is worried about the condition of the migrant laborers neither the government nor the courts or even the elite sections of the society uh so <clears throat> article 21a of the constitution which was introduced after the after the 86th amendment uh it makes free and compulsory and it is important that that it has been clubbed with the right to life article 21 as you know is is right to life so right to education has been put as 21a which means education is now considered as important as it is considered as part of the right to life i mean if you have education only then you can hope to lead a dignified life and and therefore um, this uh, uh, article uh, which makes a free and compulsory education a fundamental right um, so we feel that um, even if private schools are to be allowed in this country uh, they should keep the education free for children according to the article 21a so to meet their expenses they can raise the resources separately or or ask the government to help them but for the children it should be free uh, because this is what will curb the tendency to consider education as a business uh, now institutions are busy making profit out of education um, and uh, um in the spirit in which the article 21a was was introduced uh to to make free and compulsory education as fundamental right um uh, we have to ensure that uh you know uh, several steps are taken um sudhir agrawal's judgment implemented um the private schools even if they are allowed to function should make the education free and <coughs> ultimately we hope that uh, through nationalization of education which means uh, the government um, if not taking over the private schools completely 
at least ensuring that uh, uh, that there is a common school system that even if the private schools exist they don't charge any fees they raise their resources separately and they implement uh, a common curriculum they maintain the same standards and as the government schools and uh, um, uh, the spirit of common school system is implemented in this country uh, this is what we hope because uh, that is the only uh, tried and tested way to make sure that uh, universalization of uh, uh, elementary education um, uh, you know is achieved in this country so that is where i will end because um, uh, now there is just 10 minutes for interaction and i can already see uh, some comments are coming yes 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 uh, thank you very much sandeep ji and we now open for question and answer session the participants please type in your question in the chat box or you can raise your virtual hand if you wish to speak and uh, i think uh, this time is really very less to really deliberate and discuss about uh, the quality and the type of education we are getting in india um, i have a lot to say on this too because i have been a teacher but before that before i give my comments uh, i think uh, we have many questions as you said already there uh, Sai Sushma wants to ask a question. Would you like to ask yourself, uh, Sushma? Sushma wants to know when do you think will be the right time for a merit-based system to be followed? Perhaps she means at what level of uh, education? Yes, uh, Dr. Pandey. So I, I am not sure whether um, whether the question uh, has anything to do with the reservation policy. I think, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you are right. Uh, education is playing the role of. Uh, I don't know whether uh, what you mean by that, but uh, let me uh, just bring you back to the question of purpose of education. If purpose of education is to promote constitutional values among our children, so that uh, you know um, um, an equitable society, uh, the dream of an equitable society, of a democratic society, is is uh, uh, implemented, uh, then um, uh, we need an education system which can reach everybody everybody can can be benefited from that education system i don't see the need of uh, you know discussing the issue of merit at the level of education um so uh, you know as a teacher i never conduct examination because i don't believe that that competition is something which is good for the for the process of education everybody has to get education and uh, only the people who have to select uh, a smaller number of candidates from a larger pool need to conduct examination for example if somebody wants to give you a job or you need to be admitted for higher education to some special kind of institution uh, but except for that, I, I don't see the need for for examination in the process of education itself. Education is something which should be uh, accessible to everybody and everybody should complete their education. And the whole purpose of education should be to make uh, us a better citizen in terms of imbibing the values of the constitution. You know, the kind of values that I was I was mentioning earlier secularism, socialism, democracy, liberty, equality, social justice, fraternity. You know, these are the values which will make our society um, a more humane society. So um, I, I'm not in favor of, uh, you know, uh, raising this issue of merit at the level of, you know, school education. Um, you know, everybody should be treated equally. 
there should be no element of of uh, competition uh, introduced at the school level uh, thank you very much uh, dhanasri prakash has a question to ask सर नमस्ते सर संदीप जी हाँ नमस्ते सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है सो अभी ऑफलाइन एंड ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन का बारे में चर्चा हो रहा है सो अभी सेवेंटी सेवन परसेंट अभी इंटरनेट तो एक्सेस नहीं है और ऑनलाइन फोन तो ये प्रॉब्लम्स है और रूरल एरिया में और करंट और बिजली का बहुत समस्या है ओनली इंटरनेट 23 परसेंट एक्सेस है पर 77 परसेंट इंटरनेट इंटरनेट एक्सेस नहीं है पर सारी स्कूल्स ऑनलाइन का एजुकेशन बहुत जरूर है बोल के बता रहे हैं ये आउ कैसा ये ये गरीब बच्चों लाइक अपना गवर्नमेंट स्कूल बच्चों सारी जो बैकवर्ड क्लास बच्चों कैसा ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन मिलेगा तो ये कैसा अपन ऑफलाइन एज uh madad karenge aur online education madad karenge like uh, can can i interrupt here a minute before you answer dr pandey uh, just for the benefit of all our audience uh, dhanasri prakash wants to know about uh, uh, actually uh, how helpful is this online education being uh, how is it being helpful in times of the complete lockdown when schools are closed when 77% of the households don't have any internet connection and uh, there's a lot of electricity problem and uh, so how is it going to impact uh, the uh, socially disadvantaged people and those and i would like to add that that is not it is not only of course it is a big problem for those uh, who do not have internet connections but even for those who have internet connection is very weak and not always available and uh, i i also feel that that uh, it is really not serving the purpose for what it was meant yes, now over to you dr pandey uh, online education was asked by um, dhanashree prakash ji um, yeah. uh, uh, because we uh, i i face this question for the first time from a parent of uh, uh, of a child who has been admitted in uh, under uh, the 121c section of rte uh, he is a colleague of mine munna lal so he is uh, essentially a daily wage earner he makes makes stone items and sells them to earn his livelihood um fortunately his child has been admitted to a good uh, uh, you know private school and whenever i say good you know i essentially mean good in terms of preparing for the market that's all it has got nothing to do with knowledge so um, the uh, child is in this school which is an expensive school now the school is conducting online classes and munna lal was asking me how can my child participate when i don't have a smartphone so that is a real problem for the poor segment of the population who do not have you know good mobile phones a person like me doesn't keep a mobile phone so how do you expect uh, you know uh, such people um to uh, to get the benefit of all online education this is um, something which happened in the period of crisis but uh, really uh, at the level of it may be it may be okay to have uh, you know online um, you know interaction uh, for a seminar like this where we are discussing ideas but uh, where uh, you know basic skills are being taught and and more importantly the human values the values the kind of values that we were talking about they cannot be taught uh, by by textbooks they these values are imbibed by the children uh, from the human interaction so they they see the adults behaving in a particular way and then they imbibe those values so that is the only way the human values are transmitted from one generation to another so for that a physical interaction is necessary and therefore this whole concept of online education um, it has only a limited use uh, and it cannot entirely replace the process of uh, interaction which is required 
during education. We have a question from Praveen Srivastava. <coughs> Can you please ask your question? Praveen, Priya Praveen ji. Or can I read out his question, perhaps? Uh, Praveen ji, so let, after let him say. Yes, yes, please. I yes. think he wants to say. Yes, please ask. Yes, please ask. Yes, Praveen ji, please ask. Praveen ji, please ask. I, are you sure you, you have unmuted yourself? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, we can hear. Sir, school education के medium के बारे में मुझे बात करनी है कि private school जो है वो English medium में बच्चों को पढ़ा रहे हैं बहुत छोटे बच्चों को उस age में जबकि बच्चे ज्यादातर जिनको all over world treatment किया जाता है कि वो mother tongue में पढ़ाई वहाँ education जो है English है तरीके से वो ना समझ पाते होंगे teachers ये सवाल ये सवाल भी जो प्रवीण जी ने पूछा है बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है क्योंकि जो शिक्षाविद हैं वो तो ये मानते हैं कि शिक्षा जो है वो मात्र भाषा में होनी चाहिए बच्चे के लिए बच्चा चीजों को समझे अच्छी तरह से इसके लिए जरूरी है कि शिक्षा मात्र भाषा में हो ऐसा सारे शिक्षाविद मानते हैं यही आदर्श है लेकिन अपने देश में क्या हुआ है कि आ, हमारी गुलाम मानसिकता की वजह से हमने अंग्रेजी को ज्यादा बढ़ावा दिया और आ, सिर्फ बढ़ावा ही नहीं दिया बल्कि हमारे यहाँ व्यवस्थाएं ऐसी हैं कि आप अगर अंग्रेजी न जाने तो आप बहुत ऊंचे पदों पे नहीं पहुंच सकते जैसे कि अगर आपको आई की परीक्षा देनी है तो उसके लिए अंग्रेजी जानना अनिवार्य है अगर आपको इस देश में डॉक्टर इंजीनियर बनना है तो उसकी शिक्षा सिर्फ अंग्रेजी भाषा में होती है तो इस वजहों से जबकि दूसरे ऐसे देश हैं जैसे जापान है चीन है या दुनिया के ज्यादातर देश उन्होंने उच्च शिक्षा को भी अपनी भाषा में दिया है और इसलिए ये बिल्कुल संभव है कि अगर हम चाहते तो हम उच्च शिक्षा अपने मात्र ओ आई एम सॉरी आई सी लुबना देर सो शी विल या हेलो शी विल क्रिटिसाइज मी इफ आई कंटिन्यू स्पीकिंग हिंदी सो फॉर हर बेनिफिट ऑन एनी बडी फ्रॉम साउथ इंडिया सो इवन दो सो आई विल रिपीट इवन दो दईडियल इज दैट द एजुकेशन शुड बी गिवेन इन मदर टंग दैट इज वॉट द एजुकेशनिस्ट बिलीव दैट एजुकेशन कैन बी बेस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इन मदर टंग but the problem is that because of our slavish mentality we have uh, given importance to english language and and we have we have continued with systems so that uh, it becomes impossible for somebody uh, to reach top positions without the knowledge of english so for example if you want to write the civil services examination uh if you want to become an ias officer in this country if you want to become an engineer or doctor or a judge then the knowledge of english is compulsory you have to pass a a a paper of english in the ias examination it doesn't carry any marks but you have to clear it in order to get selected so uh, you know unless we remove these uh, restrictions and like other countries in the world i mean after all when when china and japan and and most of the countries in the world can give education in their uh, mother tongue uh, or whatever the local languages uh, i don't understand why can we not do it but we have never taken this question seriously and we continue to uh, use english for uh, higher education for uh, you know um specialized education uh, and therefore <clears throat> over a period of time <clears throat> the poor uh, said that you know if the elite is able to take advantage uh, of english to get to higher positions why should our children be denied the, the english education and therefore now uh, english which was earlier introduced only at the class 6 level is now being taught at the primary school level also 
and the Adityanath government, as soon as they came to power in Uttar Pradesh, in spite of whatever they may say about Swadeshi, whatever love they might have for the Sanskrit language, the Adityanath government made 5,000 primary schools English medium in Uttar Pradesh because that is the popular demand from people. They want their children to be educated to know English. And therefore, uh, you know, one would have expected the BJP government to make the education Sanskrit medium, but that they did not do that. They made their uh, schools English medium, 5,000 of them. So that shows that, uh, you know, um, that is a demand of the market. Uh, so whenever it comes to market, then even the Hindutva people, you know, forget their ideology. For example, one of the first things to be opened in Uttar Pradesh was liquor after the lockdown. So uh, I don't know how, how a government and how a chief minister who claims to be a sadhu can use alcohol to earn revenue for his estate. But anyway, market dominates certain things. And, and that is the case with English language also. And that is why English continues to be a, an important uh, medium of instruction in English. Uh, that is now how it should have been. But unfortunately, that is the reality. Thank you. One last request to the participants. If you have any questions, please ask quickly because Dr. Pandey will have to leave. And much as, a, as we would like to, we may not be able to extend the session uh, beyond the stipulated time. Uh, meanwhile, we have a question from Mukesh. Uh, Mukesh, would you like to ask your question? Okay, after Mukesh, me please. Yes, okay. No. Yes, Mukesh. Uh, uh, hello? Yes, hello. Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Namaskar. Uh, तो सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है ना कि जो सर ब्रिक किल ब्रिक किल चिल्ड्रन हैं और जो ब्रिक वर्कर्स हैं तो यूपी गवर्नमेंट यूपी गवर्नमेंट उनके लिए क्या स्ट्रेटजी बनाई है कि उनको कैसे शिक्षा दी जाए या उनके लिए कुछ प्लान है या उनके उनको कैसे क्वालिटी शिक्षा प्रोवाइड की जाए क्योंकि सर वो बच्चे एजुकेशन से काफी दूर हैं और उनके लिए कोई एजेंडा गवर्नमेंट के पास नहीं है सर ये मेरा क्वेश्चन है Uh, I, I just want to repeat his question uh, for the other uh, listeners. Uh, Mukesh wants to know what is the strat what is the government strategy for the education of migrant workers' children or brick kill workers' children? Uh, to from how will they get their education? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is correct, man. Yes, yes, uh, Dr. Pandey. Um, uh, sirf, uh, sirf eat bhatta pe kam karne wale mazdooron ke liye hi nahi, balki is tarah ke bahut sare जो गरीब समुदाय हैं, जो सैनिटेशन वर्कर्स हैं, मैनुअल स्केवेंजर्स हैं, ज़्यादातर गरीब समुदाय के बच्चों के लिए सरकार के पास कोई कागज़ पे सब कुछ है। ये सर ये। कागज़ पे तो यहाँ तक कहा जाता है कि माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स के बच्चों का एडमिशन वहाँ होना चाहिए जहाँ उनके माता-पिता जाते हैं काम करने के लिए। लेकिन वो होता नहीं है। और वो जहाँ से आते हैं वहाँ इसलिए नहीं होता क्योंकि वो वहाँ बहुत समय रहते नहीं हैं तो कागज़ पे बहुत कुछ है लेकिन वास्तविकता में ये सरकार जो है वो गरीबों की चिंता नहीं करती है इसकी सारी नीतियाँ पैसे वालों के लिए हैं ये स्पष्ट हो गया है इस लॉकडाउन क्राइसिस में इसलिए जो हमारे लिए बड़ी चुनौती है क्योंकि जो गरीब वर्ग के बच्चे पढ़ना चाहते हैं उनके लिए फिर हमको कुछ विशेष व्यवस्थाएं करनी पड़ती हैं उनके लिए जैसे कानपुर में आशा संस्था की तरफ से ईंट भट्टा मजदूरों के लिए एक हॉस्टल चलाया जा रहा है जो हमारे महेश भाई चलाते हैं तात्यागंज में या विजय रामचंद्रन जी 30-40 सालों से जो शिक्षा के कार्यक्रम चला रही हैं अगर इस तरह के विशेष प्रयास न हो तो ईंट भट्टा मजदूरों और गरीब परिवारों के बच्चों को अच्छी शिक्षा मिलना नामुमकिन है क्योंकि उनके सामने सिर्फ एक ही चारा है और वो है सरकारी स्कूल जहां शिक्षा ठीक से होती नहीं तो रिपीट फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ लुबना द क्वेश्चन वाज व्हाट इज द प्लान द गवर्नमेंट हैज फॉर ब्रिक किल वर्कर्स चिल्ड्रन ऑफ ब्रिक किल वर्कर्स 
and yes, I, is... I follow Hindi very well. I understood everything. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yes. Lubna ji, you please ask your question. Yes, or your comments. Yes. No, I will talk Hindi. Hindi, I. It's good to speak in English because it's okay. Please, because we have many of our listeners who. Uh, would be, I think uh, it's better you speak in English, perhaps. Okay. No, I just wanted to um, ask, uh, like uh, uh, Sandeep ji, Allahabad High Court me se bhi order aaya tha uh, that um, see all these government servants, especially people who are drawing government salaries, uh, they should admit their people into their their wards into the government schools and colleges. Uh, and uh, this was somehow not this being a High Court order is not being implemented. And one such order we found from the Chennai High Court also. So I just wanted to know, see from our party side, uh, do we work for implementation of this order, or do we say that the country is being contempt of this court order? So shall we go to Supreme Court? I mean, as a measure to strengthen this public um, universal, uh, whether it's common um, education system or the public infrastructure of education, do we, uh, um, I mean, push for implementation of these orders? शोभा जी मैं आ, सवाल बहुत ठीक से सुन नहीं पाया क्योंकि उनकी आवाज बड़ी धीमी हो गई थी आप क्या रिपीट कर पाएंगे हाई कोर्ट ऑर्डर अबाउट गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय सेंडिंग दर चिल्ड्रेन टू गवर्नमेंट स्कूल इफ द हाई कोर्ट ऑर्डर डेट वाई इज इट नॉट बीन इम्प्लीमेंटेड एज येट एंड वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप वॉट शुड बी डन टू एंश्योर दैट दिस ऑर्डर विच इज सो इम्पोर्टेंट इज इम्प्लीमेंटेड yeah <coughs> so i have um, uh because it concerns my state i have uh, personally spoken to two chief ministers um akhilesh yadav and yogi adityanath and both of them refused to implement this order essentially you know arguing in favor of privatization of education they said it is not possible for government alone to be able to take care of education of all children and uh, there is a role for private uh, institutions also and uh, they uh, they in a way seem to be protecting the interest of private schools uh, uh, so that is in brief uh, technically uh, you know uh, the the there should have been contempt of court because uh, the high court order was that this uh, uh, idea should be implemented that uh, the children of uh, people receiving government salaries must compulsorily send their children to government schools and the chief secretary of uttar pradesh was supposed to submit a compliance report after 6 months but uh, compliance report was not submitted and we approached the high court uh, for contempt of court but uh, in one case the matter was taken up by the supreme court uh, in 2000 i think it was uh, 18 or 19 and and um, the supreme court all it said was that uh, the order should be implemented but it did not do enough uh, to ensure that the order was actually implemented it was something like the supreme court said in the in uh, for the for the lockdown period that the government should try its best to you know take care of the problems of migrant laborers uh, so uh, the courts are also not serious about uh, education because we have two cases in the high court here uh, from 2016 and 16 17 and 17 18 regarding education regarding admission of children whose uh orders were passed by the district education officer for being admitted to private schools especially the city montessori school but the cases are still going on imagine somebody's admission was ordered in 2016 17 for being admitted to city montessori school and the court has still not decided i mean i don't know uh, what do the judges think is the child going to wait indefinitely for getting admission into a school so it shows the uh, the non seriousness of the courts also the governments anyway uh, uh, my belief is that they are trying to protect the interests of the private lobby they will not implement this uh, uh, judgment 
um, and Akhilesh Yadav clearly told me that uh, if I implement this judgment, that all my IAS officers will be very unhappy, and uh, they will ensure my defeat in the next election. <laughs> uh, he lost the election anyway, uh, yeah. but uh, I had long conversation with Yogi Adityanath also for 45 minutes. But uh, he was saying all kinds of things that he is doing to improve the quality of education. The only thing that he agreed with me was that every children should have access to same quality of education, which is the basic idea of common school system. But he did not agree to the implementation of uh, Sudhir Agrawal judgment. In fact, he, he, his counter question was that uh, did Sudhir Agrawal send his children to government schools? And uh, these BJP people are very critical of uh, the English educated elite. They think that uh, these English educated elite get the best quality of education in this country and then send their children to, to abroad for higher education. And then they talk about, you know, common school system. Uh, so he, 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 he gave an impression that they don't consider any suggestions coming from the, from the elite uh, seriously. Uh, I just wanted to ask one thing, uh, Dr. Pandey, that uh, uh, you have mentioned that p children who have been admitted, like they have been found eligible to be admitted uh, under the RTE Act, and uh, still the cases are pending. In other yeah. words, the, the government is not in, in, empowered enough to implement its own orders. The, it means no. that the government has passed an order, but it no. is not able to ensure that it, it is implemented. Yes, yes, you are right. Uh, a number of government orders are are uh, are not implemented. So the basic Shiksha Adhikari will pass an order that such and such child is is should be admitted to such and such branch of City Montessori School, mm -hmm. and there are almost close to two hundred admissions, which mm -hmm. are ordered to to various branches of City Montessori every year, and Mr. Jagdish Gandhi, the owner of the school doesn't admit a single child and the government can cannot do anything about it because as soon as the government will think of taking an action somebody some IAS officer some judge will call up the district magistrate and say that don't take any action because my children are studying there mm -hmm. I can give you a more concrete example there is a branch of city Montessori four houses from my house in Indranagar it has been illegally built. I have the replies from the Avas Vikas Parishad. Uh, in written, I have the orders of demolition of this building. And not from now. It is like 21 years old. But those orders are not being implemented just because this school is very powerful. Powerful in the sense that because they give education to, to children of the elite, you know, they, they manipulate the elite so that no action can be taken against them. Uh, okay, you mentioned that the government says that they cannot do away with the private school system. Uh, yeah. All right. But what they can do perhaps is improve the quality of education in the government schools. And uh, since I have been into the teaching uh, profession for 30 long years, uh, I used to wonder earlier that when teachers are so poorly paid, uh, why so much expected out of them and they are they are really not getting anything in return later on i found that at least the salaries of the government school teachers have really increased by leaps and bounds and they are getting a decent much decent salary much higher salary than those that getting by most of the teachers of private schools and still when i talk to even a slum dweller uh, she says i would like to send my child to a private school where i want somehow will pay the fees rather than a government school and also in this context i think uh, the delhi government schools have shown some improvement have shown the light that yes when you are you have uh, qualified teachers you have highly paid teachers the only thing you expect from them is to teach well and at least improve the quality of the school and i'm talking of government schools what do you have to say to that yeah uh, see if the government is seriously interested in improving the quality of education it can do as the Delhi government has shown um, uh, it has motivated it, its teachers I myself have uh, you know when I went to teach at IIM Ahmedabad I have seen 
the principals of uh, delhi government schools underwent a training at iim ahmedabad so um, you know delhi government has been spending lot of money motivating its, its teachers and principals and has put in systems of accountability uh, the parents have been involved in in the running of the school so there are various ways through which you can improve the government school system uh, but the political will has to be there unfortunately right. except for few states like kerala tamil nadu uh, himachal pradesh and delhi <coughs> these are the four three only four states which come to my mind who take their education seriously but otherwise most of the other states do not take their education seriously they uh, are not worried about the education of the uh, the uh, poor population at all yes. <coughs> and the the uh, reason seems to be what justice sudhir agrawal says justice sudhir agrawal says in his judgment that uh the children of the elite because they go to the to the private schools even the children of the government school teacher does not study in the government school the child of a government school teacher also goes to a private school so nobody has any stake in improving the quality of the government school so it has been uh, um, you know orphaned the government school system nobody is worried about the quality and that is why you know um, it is in such a bad shape so it will require a political will at the top to improve the quality of education but unfortunately for most of our governments education is not a top priority and even in the courts we see education is not a top priority uh thank you very much i think we have already overshot the time so we will not uh, detain you for more uh, dr pandey and with this we come to the end of today's session i wish it could continue for a whole day because there is so much still uh, not said or unsaid uh, but we have to close it today and in today's morning session of sdg talks which was co-hosted by indian institute of management indore and cns we were listening to noted human rights activist dr sandeep pande we will meet again at 9 pm today for a discussion on border free south asia and civil liberties and also a polite reminder for tomorrow's sdg talk by dr sp uday kumar on the occasion of world environment day bye for now and stay safe and our sincere thanks once again to sandeep ji and to our participants who really enriched today's talk So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you to thank you sir. Thank you for hosting this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you sir.